Hello there, I'm another Magento Dev and in this video we're going to look at some front end theming. We're specifically going to look at the layout XML in the header. Right then, let's uh, let's do some front end. So, we're starting with the header. The key thing is, really, when, when, when you're theming Magento 2, is to gain an understanding of where Magento keeps things, what's the default. So, the default for the header is quite literally the default. All the classes, all of the output that you see here for this header, um, structurally, because that's what we're gonna, that's what we're dealing with today, is the structure of the header um, is <clears throat> is is in that file. It's it's in here, so we can we can find it. We can find it in here. Um, so essentially, this is the so this is the design we're going for. So this is the header that I'm building today. Now, our designer doesn't necessarily always follow Luma, but I find that Luma basically is moldable, malleable, um, and you can make it. You, you can basically put any de get any design into Luma um, using just extending Luma and, and and moving things around rather than sort of rewriting the the classes yourself. Um, it's just a, a, a I find it's a, a really robust start point. It, it is Luma. So um, right. These, this is what we need to change. So, so the obvious differences are the logo by default on Luma is over to the left, the search is over to the right, and the account bits. Um, we're going to leave for now the uh, top bar in the. Obviously, we can leave the top. Uh, we're going to leave it for now, but we do need to sort of move some links out of it um, because the top bar for this site is a global message, um, and I would prefer to do my global message in a module because. I find that I, I end up reusing things like that. You know, I can I can override the global message, the global panel. So, so this tag um, here, um, I can override that nice, nice, nice and easy in a module. And then I just I keep my theme. I don't know what I keep my theme for for the actual core header itself because I I reckon you. You could put more more functionality around these these types of um, if if these become a call to action this this area becomes a call to action like this because you pr I'm probably going to want to store a static static block in it you know assign a static block to it sorry um, which would mean an upgrade script so therefore it's probably more likely that that's going to be better fit in in a, in a module um, than than in the theme than in the theme so that's that's how I sort of that's my rationale behind separating what do I do in a theme. What do I do in a module? So starting from the header is a is quite an easy an easy place to start. So essentially, I'm moving the search over to the left hand side. I'm keep I'm moving the logo over to the middle, and then I'm going to create and move. Well, I'm going to move the car over to the right hand side. Get let for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to get things in a order that makes sense the, the output of the page matches the visual so I'm gonna move the blocks around so I've already opened it um, so essentially this lives in module theme in the Magento folder uh, which is in vendor so it's in vendor Magento module theme view front end layout default so the key container for the header is the header dot container surprise surprise now this is so key that if you try and move or override this you will break the mini cart and then you'll have to do extra work in the mini cart to put it back the mini cart requires the header container in order to anchor its knockout js2 so you will get problems with the mini cart if you if you change the the header container which is essentially this one here that we're talking about because that's for the page and then that's that's your header container. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a header container, a default, sorry, a default XML, which I've created here, and I've just pasted in the boilerplate code from sort of the top, the top here. Um, I, I've not I pasted all of it, but essentially this will this will this will do. Um, and then in here, I'm going to reference the header container. I always have to watch out for those. So I'm going to reference the header 
dot container. And this is the one I'm referencing as a, just a recap. It's this one here, so I'm referencing the header container. Sure, there's no typos. Perfect. Right. And then inside of the header container, I'm going to create myself the new structure. Now, once you're inside this container, go nuts. You can create whatever structure you want. What I would advise doing is, is creating all of your structure within the header container. Don't create it. Don't, you can add other containers outside of this container and then and then and then move these conta this container to those containers, but don't overwrite this container. And by overwrite, it would look like something like this. So it would be a container block in my um, in my default XML. Would then this would then override it and become the new container. And then I would do something like um, I'd remove. Um, I'd remove the uh, the header container here, and then I'd add my own. Um, I'd remove the header container here, and then I would add my own container. I'd advise not doing that. And really, I can't think of a layout that you're ever going to come across. Please enlighten me in the comments if you've come across a, a layout where you have to remove this container. Essentially, on an e-commerce site, I mean, if you look at it on the front end, look, it's a header tag. It's the header tag. Leave it alone. Um, don't make life difficult for yourself down the line. So, in here, I'm going to start adding my own containers because what I want to do is I want to add some empty containers to move the core Magento blocks to. So, as you can see, like in the design, even though they've moved around, the logo exists as a core block, the search exists as a core block, and majority of these exist as core blocks. And at least, I'll, even if they don't, and I want to group them together in the new block, it's going to be pretty simple to do. But for now, I want to get a right container. I want to have a central container and I want to have a left container. That's what I'm going for with this this little piece to sort of in a bit of an introduction to uh, to layout. So right then, you can call this what you like. Now I go for sort of normally stuff like header left, um, and then I like camel case here just so it's nice and readable for me. Uh, the HTML tag is a div. I don't bother with an ID, or I don't need to bother with an ID in this situation. Now, I'm using Pure Grid CSS. I'll put a link to it in the um, in the description um, for my my grid layout. Um, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm not going to actually use any of those classes. Um, I'm just going to add some sort of arbitrary um, CSS to. Um, Sort of highlight what I'm doing and show you on the front end. So I've created here three empty columns. Even spelling center the American way. Don't know why. Just do. Just always do now. Right then. So. That 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 should do it. That'll that's basically giving me my anchor points. The next thing I need to do is start moving. So I'll just notate this so I can keep track. Because as this file within your theme does does grow, I, I'll I'll be honest with you. Like the footer is also in here. Um, as I've touched on in another tutorial, the footer's already always in here. There's other global elements like content and um, and body that are quite useful. And page bottom I find useful. Um, so this this does tend to grow. You'd also remove things globally in here, like um, uh, what would you remove globally? Like that the Daft PayPal um, logo in the sidebar. So say for example, I was gonna I was gonna remove that um, the PayPal logo. It'd look something like this at the top, and then I know that's gonna um, I'm gonna get rid of that. Next time the category loads, like, because who, who really uses that? Ridiculous. Um, also, the compare links I don't need on this site. So while I'm here, um, I can I can get rid of those in this um, in this file as well. Um, so I'm gonna start moving moving stuff about, and moving is so simple. It's really a simple uh, sort of uh, operation in Magento 2. So it starts with a move tag. By the way, this extension that I'm using here is a snippet, a complete, um, a complete 
thing, uh, a snippet completer, and it is this one, Magento 2 Snippets by Jerry Lopez. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I use the Magento Wizard, which I've touched in on in another tutorial for modules, and then Magento Snippets comes in really useful for um, for theming because it has a lot of good snippets for XML, XML default XML layout. So I'm looking at the element, and I want to move the logo. We'll start with that, and I want to move it into um, header center. Now, it's the name. It's not the label or any of it. You go off the name. So the destination is the name. Um, and because it's the only thing going in there, I don't need to position it. And by position it, I mean like if you was putting two things in there, you might do after, and then the hyphen means that it's going to be after everything. Uh, conversely, before also means before the hyphen means after any uh, um, before everything. Um, and also then you can also specify in here. Say you had two logos, logo one and logo two. You could do before logo one, for example. Um, after logo two, you can you basically got a, it's binary, you know, but you've got a lot of um, a lot of control. And um, so essentially, I want to move the logo into the header center. This one, I want to move uh, the search. So move uh, the search. The top search is called in Magento two. Top search block. Into over to the um, over to the right hand side, or nest it in the right block if you like, and then I want to move the um, well. I want to make sure, even though they are over to the left now um, on Luma theme, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, even though the cart is over there on the um, on the on the right hand side, because I'm adding blocks in, I need to reiterate that and move it into into the block that I want it in uh, just because that's where it's going to live over there on the right hand side um, so it doesn't basically get lost in the header and sort of float all over the place so mini cart it's called um, and I'm referencing the element and then I'm moving it to header oh just realized what I've done here this needs to be header left and this needs to be header right okay this is where it gets a little bit tense because Let's um, see what happens. Wait, it, look out! <laughs> oh, it's an error. Oh, silly Billy! Don't like the dot. Hands up! It put put in the comments if you spotted that and you was sat there real frustrated um, that I'd done that wrong and you were thinking it's gonna error, it's gonna error, it's gonna error. Um, right then, so. Do something a bit more acceptable. There we go. Right. Looks a bit weird, but we'll can some sort that out with some CSS. But here we go, look. It's worked. So we've got the header panel still sitting at the top where we need it. We've got a nice left column over here. Um with the search in it. Well it looks like the logo, then it? it's not. The logo is actually here. Which is lovely in the centre. It's also dragged in the uh, toggle for the toggle for the nav, but we can we can sort that out, um, and that's not too. And then the right column has got the mini cart in it, just as we suspected. And then dropping below that, I'm going to have the nav once there's data in the site. The nav will the nav will appear below where we where we expect it to appear. So that's a a real quick sort of intro to layout XML and how to sort of get started with a theme it's best place to start is an header and um, I hope this explains sort of the methodology that's required um, to sort of make life easy for yourself move stuff around rather than recreating it um, and as you can see obviously these don't count but I've you know I've just added them in because I need to for this project uh, but look at how many lines of code and I've got my I've got me I've got my HTML how outputting in the header just as as I need it to. Now it's just going to take, you know, a little bit of customization. Oh, look at this! Terrible, Adam. Terrible. Terrible. Right. So yeah, as I was saying, it's dead easy. Um, I I hope that was useful to some of you. I'm going to do these. As, I'm going to do as many of these front end tutorials as I can. Um, 
a good thing if, if you watch this and you want me to explain something a little bit further that I can sort of as I'm developing this live project I'm going to do I'm going to sort of do as many of these as, as I can so pop in the comments if you want to know anything specific um, as I say I've started with a header obviously I'll move on to the footer catalog page PDP cat check out I can, I can cover them all this this is a good introduction because even though this is the header and it's in default XML the the premise of this the, the sort of theory behind it can be carried through to all them other areas that I that I mentioned. You'll be able to jump straight into the PDP. It's a little bit more complicated, but you'll be able to get your head around the idea between the idea of referencing a container, adding your own blocks in that you know your own containers, and then moving the core Magento core into those containers uh, before and do all that first, and then extend it with this stuff that's bespoke to your to your theme. That's but it, that, layering it like that is the best way to um, approach it. We've also then you've got a situation then where you've got a clean, nice clean slate. You know you've got your core build. You know it's going to be nice and solid, the base. Then you make a decision: what needs to be a module, what can live in the theme. And as I say, anything requiring even a database upgrade for data, you know, adding in a static block here and there, um, or or an extra attribute and a product. If it's like, for example, a brand logo on a product page, I'd do that in a module. And it's also useful because you can take those over to other projects as well, and you've got yourself a ready-made brand logo. Like these things get repeated, no matter how bespoke a designer goes within a site, uh, with a site design. Generally, um, they're not reinventing the wheel too much, um, and Luma Theme is a fantastic place to start. So, as I say, I hope this has been useful. Uh, like and subscribe, but also pop, put your ideas in the comment. Uh, I love the conversation; it'd be great.